Hello everyone. <coughs> Happy to see you here. Uh, and because of the time, I will speed up and skip some details. And uh, you, if you have any questions, maybe we can have a talk at the lunch time or offline via the email. Yeah, my email is my name at Huawei.com. Okay. Uh, this, this talk will introduce our practice of memory over content in the platform, uh, share our some findings, lessons, and uh, potential pitfalls. The uh, reminder of this talk is organized as follows. Uh, first, it provides some background information on memory over commitment, and, uh, uh, and then it's described about the uh, Stability, performance, scalability, and uh, uh, compatibility. And then at last, we conclude this topic. So, what is memory over commitment? Uh, yeah, it's really a old, old story. And maybe five years ago, or maybe ten years ago. And uh, what is memory over commitment? Uh, it enables users to consolidate virtual hardware on less uh, hardware, <coughs> physical hardware. And it enables users to power on VMs with a total memory uh, configured uh, exceeds the number of physical memory. Yeah. So um, there are arguments. Uh, there are both uh, favors and arguments on uh, whether it is, it is need or not, because uh, uh, the cost of the cost of memory is continually fall, right? Uh, personally, I'm not a fan <coughs> of this practice, but uh, uh, the our uh, corporate culture of Huawei is customer centered, so. Uh, the customer is keen, the client is gone. So we get the technique ready and the clients decide to use it or not. Right? Uh, and currently we have more than 1,000 key customers and more than 100,000 VMs using this technique to <coughs> overcommit the memory. And some of the customers, uh, some of the our commitment ratio is more than 150 uh, percent. It means that uh, the user can power on, for example, 150 GB VM on one physical machine with only 100 GB memory. And they run their own applications day and night and uh, there is no bugs reported in the past year. It shows that memory overcommitment can be done safely and uh, as long as you don't put things too far. Okay, let me need to speed up. Okay, uh, I, I think this is important so I uh, maybe don't skip it because I think uh, the voice from the client is most important. So, <coughs> um, obviously, the traditional use case is to get higher consolidation ratio, but there are also some special reasons that we have to use it. Uh, in, for example, in private cloud, uh, our customers want to move their traditional business into the cloud but uh, don't want to buy new machines and don't want to change their own memory size. Uh, for example, one uh, 64 GB uh, instance runs okay, works well in his, on his own 64 GB machine. But while crowding, it means that one 64 VMs have to run on 64 physical memory. It means that we have to overcommit the memory uh, because the hypervisor and the domain zero also use that memory. 
And uh, second scenario is server virtualization. Uh, our customers always request map request virtual machines with large amount of memory, such as uh, 64 GB. Yeah, but uh, the physical memory maybe only have 128 GB. Yeah, if if we if we disable memory commitment, we can only place one VMs on one physical machine. So there is no enough pets, no enough memory to place another 64 GB VM. So it's a serious waste of, of memory, of resource. And yeah, the other scenario is uh, such as VDI and web service. <coughs> Most of them uh, only use uh, thirty percent or less memory. Yeah, in, from our investigation, uh, it's very low loads. So yeah, that's why our customers require memory our commitment strongly. And uh, there are also some other uh, requirements such as dynamic resource scheduling. Uh, the physical machines may be unhealthy, uh, such as uh, MCE error, this broken up, uh, file system read only, or maybe we need to do some power management, or maybe we uh, use live migration to upgrade the uh, software, hardware, yeah, because of we need to move uh, move, uh, move one host VM to another host, to empty the host and upgrade it. So when we do the live migration, the old commitment may be happened. Right? The old commitment may be happened at uh, when we need maybe uh, in a special event. Uh, so that's why we need it. Okay, so how to do it? Uh, <coughs> the first technology is memory populator on demand. It's called P POD pod in the uh, Zen uh, hypervisor code. Uh, it's useful. It's useful, but not useful only by itself. Yeah, because, uh, okay, pod, pod means that uh, the memory only be taken up when you actually use it. Right? Uh, but uh, as the time passed, the guest may touch more and more memory. Right? The pod will be less and less. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Windows. Yeah. The Windows OS will zero clearly all of the page at the good time. So it means that all of the pod page disappear during good, during good time. So, uh, <clears throat> so we need some re recl reclamation method to uh, reclaim the memory. Right? Uh, one method is reclaim hypervisor. Yeah, there is some codes in the Zen hypervisor, but uh, it's too expensive. It may take a long time. It may block the VM for a while time and cause a significant performance uh, degrade, degradation, so um, it's very expensive. We need more uh, method to reclaim memory. And yeah, we can see memory blooming. Memory blooming is an active and effective uh, method to reclaim the memory, but uh, it requires a driver inside of VM. The driver will allocate memory inside VM, inside VM and free it to hypervisor and make the memory is able to be used to uh, for other VMs. But uh, it's, it's, it's useful, but we must use it very, very carefully. Uh, one reason is uh, uh, our clients may be found out that their memory is taken up by some unknown the SAS, right? the boom driver, right? Uh, many customers complain about it, and uh, maybe when they want to start a process with large memory, yeah, it may start slow because or maybe even cause an out of memory error.
because all of the mem most of the memory is taken up by the memory burned room driver. Okay? So it's really take us a long time to complain to explain about it and the son of the client refused to accept it. And uh, the second reason is that uh, we you, we need a driving system. So uh, in some older version Linux OS there may be some terrible bug, serious bug and maybe cause some unexpected error. So so we need a we need a more reliable, uh, effective method to reclaim the memory that's memory sharing. Mm. We we copy the idea from KSM in Linux and we write a demon to scan all of the memory and find the duplicate page and uh, we reuse some code in the advisor uh, it's called paging. Yeah. We use some paging code to share the duplicate page. Uh, it's very effective and it shows that it may save 50% uh, of the memory or even more. Uh, yeah, it works well most of the time. Uh, but even with that, the host may still run low on memory. We need a guaranteed method with memory swapping in an emergency. Uh, it swaps out the memory if there is we, if we can do nothing. Uh, if if we don't swap memory, the system may be out of memory. So we have to swap the memory. Uh, but it may cause a performance penalty. Mm. Uh, notice that uh, we do a lot of optimization to get better performance when memory swapping. Uh, one important thing is disk I/O speed. Uh, it's very easy in the to. Uh, to place uh, to place the swap path of one VM to one special pass, so we can place some, so we can place one VM swap pass to one stop one remote storage, together with the system disk of the VM is. Now we can use many remote storage and. Uh, distribute the I.O. pressure to many remote storage and gain more uh, I.O. ability. But it's very difficult in KOM because we use KSWD to do the swap and KSWD is very difficult to uh, to set one VM swap pass to one pass, special pass. Now they use a common pass. So we can only use local disk to swap in KVM. So the KVM swap, swap is get a, a poorer performance because of the disk I/O speed. Yeah, because if you use remote storage in KVM, yeah, the system may be crash if the uh, the remote storage broken up. But uh, in turn, it will only affect one VM. <coughs> okay, there is another technology named memory compression. It uh, compress the memory in a compression cache zone. Yeah, but uh, like I said, it's a nice toy. Sounds good, but uh, we tried many data reduction algorithms and uh, uh, sometimes, it, some modes it works well, but it, uh, there is side effects in some other models. So, uh, we only use it in some POC tests and uh, disable it by, by default. Uh, <coughs> so, we also need memory or concurrency to decide when to do and what to do and how to do it. And also, uh, a lot of 
optimization on how to make sure memory QoS is workable, including reservation shares and limits. <coughs> that is, uh, I, it's also an important component of the manual commitment, but because of the time, we may have to skip it. Okay, last, uh, another important thing is scalability. And we found that uh, the performance uh, is very poor when the system became larger, even maybe 64 VCPUs. Yeah, a lot of people worked on improving the scalability and we can find lots of optimization in upstream such as a default sensing to reduce the log time, use a CPU log instead of global log, uh, maybe use read write log instead of log text, and we also do some optimization yeah, uh, from the, we, we found the, the key bottleneck and uh, improve its, its uh, API approval. Uh, when we use manual components, uh, the EPT change is very frequent, right? So it will, uh, there is frequent API to invalidate EPT on related PCP. So uh, the amount of API is very, very large. So um, we found the key bottleneck is that is the global call lock. Each API will block a global call lock means a global lock named call lock. So we uh, we use a we rewrite a CPU lock to send the API, and we use MCS lock instead of ticket lock to make sure it's uh, to be scalable. Okay. Uh, it's a relation result, but we need to skip the details. Just uh, compare with the blue line and the green line. Uh, it shows that with the uh, with the optimization, the number of log weight and each time consuming are both reduced significantly. Okay, there are some uh, with some other features. Uh, we must make sure. Uh, memory all commitment works well being with other features or maybe benefit our uh, integration. Okay, it's 15 minutes. Okay, we we'll just summarize it. Uh, such as live migration, we can just skip the we can just skip the hog page and the blog page. Yeah. We rebuild the we review this page in desk just with zero page or pop zero or pop page. It will uh, save a lot, a lot of time. It shows that the time consumption is reduced to one third or less. Yeah, it also benefits snapshotting, hybrating, guest bounding. Yeah, and the, when we uh, when we power on a VM with Custom device, uh, we must make sure the memory is full reserved because the VTD can't handle the EPT needs correctly, right? And so on. Uh, okay, let's forget it. Okay, uh, we we talked about an old story about old computers, but it's very useful in our Scenario in our client scenario. So, and we also listen to the voice from our client about the use case, and we talk about the story, how to uh, continuously improve the stability, performance, scalability, and compatibility. And yeah, that's the things we do in the uh, language. Okay, so. Uh, it's time to lunch. If you have any questions, we can talk offline. Okay. Okay, let's have a nice lunch.